if you would like. Okay, I'll change it. We'll do, there is another what if story to be done, but I'm not going to do that right now. I would do. Well, yeah, I, I have told this before. You might have heard it, you might not. There was a, a fairy land, a wonderful place, where there was a king. Sadly, the king, the last of his line, died. And the country was taken over by another. Some said he was a false king. Some said that the dark elves had had some work, some behind the scenes manipulating to bring this king to the throne of this land. And on the day of his coronation, he walked forward, stepped up and addressed the people and he says, I'm going to be the greatest king you've ever had. I am going to be such a great king. Really, believe me, I'll get the dwarves back to work. They'll be back down the mines. No problem, no problem. I'm just going to go over here and pause. It's going to be the greatest pause you've ever seen. Hey, finished it. That was the greatest pause ever. So, thank you so much, sir. I like a loyal subject, not like some of those. Yo, I'm the king. I am the king. Okay, I've had enough of that with Moldenstern. Or whatever it is. The strange thing about the king is that on his head, where the crown kind of bubbled about was a huge shock of red hair standing about three feet high straight up but with a kind of weird peak at the front and people would wonder about this because it would appear with this shock of red hair and then every six months as time went by he would disappear and not be seen for another three months. And people used to wonder, why was this? And they began to realize and notice that to a man, every barber in the land was disappearing. Until only there was one barber, one hairdresser left in the entire kingdom and he was summoned to the palace. And his chamberlain Says, right. They must have just you have to cut the king's hair, cut it neat, cut it tidy, cut it round his ears. And then you will say no more of this. I will ensure you. So the barber began cutting the king's hair. What thing, a match last night? Nothing. You see the fight? Nothing. Something for the... No, okay. He cut his hair, closely cropped to his skull, and revealed that the king had donkey's ears sticking from the top of his... It's true. Donkey's ears! The chamberlain says, not a word of this, I will ensure. Guards, take him and execute him. The king's secret shall never be found out. And the barber was a wise man because he knew he was the last barber there. Who would cut the king's hair if not he? And he said so. He said, Sire, if you keep me, I will cut your hair faithfully. It's a good steady job. Who, what, what barber would not want to be the king's personal couturier and barber? He says, yeah, we could do that. Uh, and he told him what he was going to do. And what he did was he had to use money from his own purse to buy bricks and mortar and build himself a small cottage in the woodland, far away from anybody. No door or window. Well, there was a window, but it, it was not easy to get in and out. He was fetched in and out when the king needed him. Trapped he was in there. Couldn't say a word to anybody. But nobody took into account the young girl that was just dawdling along the woodland path picking flowers for her mother. 
and she passed this cottage. She didn't know what it was. It was just a big square brick building. But she heard these words saying, uh, yeah, I've been locked up in here. He doesn't know I'm going mad. I think I'm going mad. I might be going mad. I don't know. Maybe I'm going mad. They take your donkey's ears. Oh, my. I don't know where he can put his head over here. They take donkey's ears. Donkey's ears. And the little girl heard this and she went, Oh, but she's mummy, I was in the woods and I heard a voice in the thing and he was saying that the king had donkey's ears. Oh, get away with your life. Talk so stupid, I don't know. Hey, mother, you never know what our Lizzie's just said. She said that the king has donkey's ears. Oh, get away, unless you're talking of such things as say. Oh. Thank you, dear. Oh, who never heard of me? George, George, do you know what our Lizzie's just said to her mummy? She said that the king has donkey's ears. No, oh, no, he's charged up to do me that. The king got donkey's ears. Never had it, Ray. Thank you, that is. <sighs> Tommy, you know what our lass has told me? Our Lizzie, the king's got donkey's ears. Get away with it, lad, I don't think he's got donkey's ears. Hey, he just said things has got donkey's ears. And within hours, it was throughout the kingdom. Word of mouth. This caused the palace much concern. And returning to the throne, sided by the chances. Okay, I really want to assure people that I don't have donkey's ears. With doggy's ears, my ears are perfectly real. Okay, they're cool ears. Everybody needs ears like mine. I do great ears. I do really, really great ears. And he took off the hood and the crown and revealed to have a pair of ears standing a good two feet off the top of his head. See, the thing is, I've got real ears, rich human ears. You are all the ones with donkey's ears. Anything else? Like the, the stories that the, the barbers have been hung? That's just fake news. <laughs> but everybody could see and everybody said, the king has donkey's ears. The king has ears. And at the back of the crowd, a carter was unhitching his donkey from his cart. And the donkey looked at the throne. Aruga! Aruga! Boom, 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 boom. And galloped full penalt to the throne, catching the king straight in the midriff, and galloped off into the distance, never to be seen again. I thank you. I'm not going to do another one because I can't keep up the pace just now. <laughs> so I will leave you and allow Carmen and the devil to get set up and they will be giving us some top tunes, I'm sure.